Now, the job for this video is we would like to be able to restrict the input for what the user is allowed to enter in the text view to only be emoji. So right now we're kind of in a bad state where the user has entered in hello, I've entered in hello, and we actually updated the status as hello. And that defeats the purpose of the app, right? The pur purpose of the app is to be creative and, and funny with different statuses that are only consisting of emojis. Let's go to Android Studio and fix this. We're going to add some filters on the edit text. So let me show you what that looks like. There's an attribute here called filters. And this basically is telling the edit text, how can you restrict the input of the edit text, which is exactly what we, what we want. And this filters attribute will take in an array of filters. I want to point out here that there are actually two separate filters that we want to apply. One is the emoji restriction, and the second is a length restriction. So first is the emoji restriction. That one's actually a little bit harder, so I'm going to punt on that for now. I'll get to it in a minute. The input length is actually very simple to implement. We don't want people to have statuses which are, you know, tens or dozens of characters long, dozens of emojis long. Instead, we really want to be concise about how many emojis we're allowing people to have. And the way we can do that is with an inbuilt filter called a length filter. So I'll say length filter is equal to input filter dot length filter. And then here you need to specify what is the maximum length that you're allowing. And we're going to allow, I'm just going to put a nine here. And the reason we're saying nine is because each emoji is actually a Unicode. And a Unicode character actually consists of multiple characters compared to plain text. So I'm no expert in Unicode. Um, I can leave some pointers to some documentation. But what I found is that most Unicode characters are at least two characters long or up to four characters long. And so when I say a max of nine, that essentially means that we're allowing a maximum of four Unicode characters or potentially as little as two. If you got unlucky and you picked two Unicode characters, which equate to four characters. So that's the first filter that we're going to apply, length filter. The second one we're going to have is an emoji filter. This is a custom one that we're going to define, call it emoji filter. And I'm going to make a new class out of this, emoji filter. And we're going to define this as a separate class. And again, you can sense the pattern here. I'm going to define it inside of main activity. You should probably be defining this into a separate class altogether just for cleanliness. But just because it'll all fit together in main activity, I'm going to do it right here. So I'm going to define an inner class here called emoji filter. And this is going to be a subclass or it's going to inherit from input filter. And you have to override certain methods here. So I'm going to have Android Studio help us with that. There's a method here called filter. And there's a bunch of parameters here, which I'll explain a little bit about. Let me put this all in one line, just to make it a little bit more readable. But basically, the idea here is that whatever is attempted to be inputted into the edit text, that is going to be this source parameter, this first parameter. And if we allow this input to be added to the edit text, we're going to just simply return source. So if the added text is valid, return source. Um, if it's invalid, then we want to return empty string. Basically meaning that whatever you inputted is not allowed, go back to just empty string so that we essentially don't modify whatever is already there in the edit text. And you'll notice here that the return value of this method is car sequence. And it's valid to return a string here because a string is actually a type of car sequence. So let me show that to you. If I just type in string and then I'm able to go to the definition, you can see that the string class inherits from car sequence. So that's why you're allowed to just return empty string um, in certain code paths. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense uh, with this pseudocode. Now the question is, how can we identify what is valid emoji based on this source variable, right? And the reason why source here is a car sequence and not a car, you might think, okay, I can only really add one character at a time in edit text. That's actually not entirely true because when you have suggestions in the keyboard on Android, you can actually add in certain whole words. And so the source might be multiple characters together, which is why it's a car sequence and not just a single car. And similarly, an emoji is not one character. It's actually multiple characters tied together. So the way I want to build this is actually start with the invalid cases first. So first of all, if 
source is null because this is a nullable car sequence, right? Or if the source is blank, which basically means that it's just kind of empty text, then I want to return empty string. Basically, no need to modify whatever is already in the edit text. Otherwise, I want to just add a log statement here. Let's so say log i um, at info level, and then I just want to kind of help us to debug what's happening here. I'll say added text source. It has a length of, let's print out how long this car sequence is. And now I can just say return source for now. All right, so let's just make sure that we're using this emoji filter. I'm gonna put it inside of the array of filters. And we're about to finish this to do, so I'm gonna get rid of that as well. Okay, so let me try the app right now and just see what happens based on the, the logs that we see. So let's open up Logcat and I'm gonna filter for um, main activity. Okay, so if I open up the edit text and I start typing T, for example. So we are able to add a T and T, like we expect, has a length of one character. However, if I start using one of the autocomplete options, such as thanks here, then you can see the added text is the whatever is remaining after we chop off the T, which is Hanks, and that has like the five characters. And now let's actually just go back a little bit and oh, add in an emoji like, like this one. So here you can see this emoji of the crying face has a length of two characters. And there are a couple, let me see if I can find one, like this one, uh, this ribbon, emoji has a length of three characters. So that's what I was saying, that the emojis actually have variable length. Some are two, some are three, and then there's a few that are actually four. And so we want to make sure that we accommodate that scenario. Now the question is, how do we make sure that the input is valid emojis? So one thing we can look at is, is the character that's added have length of more than one character? But that's not a perfect way of filtering out only emojis, because like we saw, if you add something from the autocomplete, that will also give you something with more than one character. And the way we're gonna approach this, which I think is the more robust way, is we're gonna iterate through each character of this source and check the type of it. Each character has a type. And what I have found based on some Googling is that every character of an emoji has a certain type of character. And we're gonna check based on iterating through this car sequence, whether each character fits that one of those valid types. And so let me just show you what are the valid types. So I'm going to define a list here called valid car types. And this is going to be a list of, and then uh, it's going to be character dot surrogate. These are static variables defined on the character class. So surrogate is one of them. And the other two I found are non-spacing mark and character dot other symbol. So these are the three that I found which encompass what are possible Unicode characters. And then one thing I want to do is I want to map this. So right now you can see that these are all of type byte and I want to actually make all of these of type int. So this, this valid car types is a list of integer. And the reason I want it to be a list of integer is because when we get the type of each input character from source, it's going to be of type integer. So now our job is simply to iterate through each character, each input car character in source and get the type of that. And that's what I was referring to as character.getType. And I'm going to look at the type of input character, save that into a variable called val type. And for debugging purposes, why don't we log something here? So um, character type, and then print out the character type here, which is type. Cool. And then what we want to do here is check, is this type, does it actually exist inside of valid character types? If the answer is no, that means that this, whatever is being added is not a valid emoji and we should not be allowed to add it to the edit text. So I'll say if valid car types contains um, type. So if the list of valid car types doesn't have type inside of it, that means that you know this is incorrect, this is not valid. So I'll say context is this dot main activity only, and we'll tell the user only emojis are allowed. 
and then return empty string, basically invalidating whatever they've inputted and just returning empty string. If we've gotten to the end, that means that the at added text is valid. And then these other branches up here are if this is invalid. So let's try it now. And let's just see what the log statements tell us about the type of each character. I'm going to run this, go into the emulator, and let's open up LogCat. OK, so now if I add in t, we should hopefully not be allowed to input that because it's not of the proper type. So I type in t. And yeah, we do see this toast message which says only emojis are allowed. And the added text is not modified, which is awesome. If you look at the logs, you can see that the added text has one character. And the type of this character is is uh, two. And if you look at the surrogate has type 19, non-spacing mark is 6, and other symbols 28. So it's 19, 6, and 28. So basically, every character of a Unicode should be one of those. And let's test that, right? If I now go to the emoji section and I do this birthday gift. So here you can see the birthday gift has two characters and each are type surrogate, which is this 19. And the other one, which had three characters, that ribbon, has the first two characters of type 19, which is surrogate, and the last one of non-spacing mark. So this is how we're able to really be able to distinguish emojis are valid and things like letters are not, that, that didn't work. And also things like autocomplete, which do have length of more than one character, even those are not allowed because the character type there is not going to be one of the three that we have put into the allow list. So now if we go back to the app, I tap OK. So now instead of hello, we updated the status and that it's also updated properly in Firestore. So now this is a really good way of sanitizing the input and only allowing emoji. So if you've built out at this point exactly what we have over here, I would love to hear from you. This is a really kind of cute, simple app, which actually integrates a bunch of Firebase services. And if we revisit this initial architecture diagram, hopefully it all makes a little bit more sense now. Firebase authentication will trigger a function in Firebase Cloud Functions whenever a new account is created. That will create the new user document in the user's collection, and that will get sent down to all the clients which are listening for updates on the user's collection. And finally, we just finished the logic to allow users to update their status. And that's restricted to only being emojis. So the cool thing about this is that there's so many ways you could extend this and improve this app to make your own. Uh, the published version of the app that I have, I did a couple things. One is I improved the UI and I also added sorting by update time, right? Because right now we are, whenever you update the status, it just kind of updates in place. But you would like to be able to bring the users who updated the status most recently to the very top of the list. So that's something that you could very easily do just by adding an updated time attribute. And also you could do other things like maybe users want the ability to increase the length of their status. And that could kind of be a premium feature. You could have have people uh, who update their status frequently, get that functionality, or it could be a paid feature. There's a bunch of things that you could kind of be creative with or experiment with. So if you do any of these, I would love to check out your app and, and play with it as well. Drop me a comment and let me know. That's all I had for this series. I hope you enjoyed building it and you can take the concepts here and apply it to whatever else you want to build in the future. I'll leave links to all the code that we wrote along with documentation that we referenced in the description. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, let me know and I'll help as much as I can. Until next time, see you later. Bye.